Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I have a really exciting interview for you today. I have Whitney Nicely with me, uh, who is focused on educating and helping women uh, invest in real estate without banks or a brokerage or a license. Uh, how are you doing this morning, Whitney? I'm fantastic, how are you? Oh, I'm doing very well. I have to say that I'm really glad that April Crossley connected us because um, something I put out just about a week ago is I looked at my YouTube statistics and I am doing a horrible job of educating or connecting with the female audience. So I'm like, I need to fix that. So I'm gonna go talk to Whitney and see what's going on. <laughs> well, we were talking earlier, I think you're not doing a horrible job, you just haven't focused on women and we always get what we focus on, right? There we go. So we're going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to spend 30 days trying to, trying to, you know, go from like 3% to like 13% or something. <laughs> <laughs> so Whitney, do me a favor, introduce yourself to the, to the folks watching sort of who you are, what you do, all of that kind of stuff. And we'll dig in. Awesome. Hey y'all, my name is Whitney Nasley and I'm the broker for Whitney Buys Houses. I'm also the creator of She Buys It. So I focus on helping women buy investment properties, whether it's houses or apartments or money or vacation rooms or whatever it is that you want to buy. I really talk to those women that Michael isn't getting to yet, but I help those women get their deals done fast. Oh, I like that. And um, let's sort of set the landscape because you, uh, you know, you come from a, a, you know, a portion of experience because you have apartments, you have vacation rentals, you do lease options, you do all these things. So uh, why don't we kind of talk about what keeps you and your portfolio busy these days and then we'll, we'll go even further. Well, I'm looking at a whiteboard with all of my properties on it. I have about 13 houses right now and I've got seven of them paid off free and clear. So that keeps me good and busy. Yeah. I've got three apartment complexes that are just full as of this month. Got them all full. And I am in the process of pulling a line of credit on my free and clear houses so that I can be a private money lender and help other women get some other deals done. And I've got three empty houses right now. One of them is a vacation rental and I just don't have a tenant tonight. Yeah. Then two of them, I'm thinking about putting furniture in and turning them into a vacation rental too. So between balancing and juggling all of that, I do stay pretty busy. I would say so. Uh, the thing I haven't heard yet is where in the country are you? <laughs> I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee. Tennessee. Awesome. And, and all of your portfolio, your whiteboard is Tennessee? My honey hole is the greater East Tennessee area. Not necessarily in Knoxville, but okay. pretty close. Driving distance. Yes, definitely. Okay, very cool. Uh, why don't we dive into vacation rentals? That's an area I don't have much focus on and, and kind of talk about your first one. What, what was that like and uh, how's that work? So in 2013, my brother and I bought two houses one summer, spent our entire life savings buying a house. And one of the houses was falling down the mountain when we bought it. So we oh. had to flip it and fix it and secure it, right? So it took yeah. us 18 months to get it situated. And because we didn't know what we were doing, right? Yeah, yeah. And once we got it done, I learned about lease options in those 18 months. So we lease optioned it out to some guys. And March of last year, the FBI raided that house because there was a drug train from Michigan to Florida. And our house happened to be the Knoxville stop. I mean, like, <laughs> I've done a lot of wrong things, but... I didn't know that's how they were paying me rent every month. And they were a couple months behind on rent too. But they gave me $10,000 to move into this house and they were paying me $1,000 a month. And this is in a neighborhood where $500 is tops. So I thought I was killing it, right? Well, the FBI found a hundred grand in drugs and 80 grand in cash or vice versa or something. And I was pissed off because that would have bought the house from me. <laughs> So this time last year, I ended up getting that house back and that was the house that was falling down the mountain and it had a little bit of a stigma when yeah. I tried to put it back out onto the market. Just you know a little? I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little. Um, and we had to do some things to it to get it back ready to go back on the market because when the FBI busts in the house, it's like on the movies, they break shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It goes. So um, it stayed on the market for a couple months and I couldn't get it to go. I could not get it to go. And I learned about vacation rentals in the meantime. So we put some furniture in it and got it ready to rent in two weeks for Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. And the weekend before Thanksgiving, we went to New York. My family and I went to New York for 
my birthday and Thanksgiving week. We were going to be gone for eight days. Well, that Friday, I was talking to somebody on Airbnb, and they, because the pictures I had were just like rough, yeah, we got furniture in there, they were asking me what the outside of the house looked like, and if there was any TVs in it, and if there was, you know, if it was family ready, and I was like, oh yeah, we got TVs, we got games, we got furniture, we just don't have the pictures ready, ready yet, because I didn't have the stuff in it yet, yeah. I was ready for Thanksgiving. So that Friday night, the people that I was talking to, messaging, decided to go take my TVs and my new bedroom suits and my furniture that I just put in it in the last two weeks. Um, and we have them on camera leaving with all the furniture that I just put in it. Oh, so my God. that Saturday I spent the day in New York city on the phone with people in Knoxville, getting my furniture reordered and put back in before the people showed up on Wednesday to vacation rental in my house. Oh, wow. So when I tell you I have been through all of the wrong things to do, <laughs> I mean it. This yeah. house has taught me so many lessons. And I'll tell you, before the FBI rated it, we were making $1,000 a month. Right. After I learned not to tell everybody where the goods were and how to screen people on Airbnb and all the other places, we have turned that thing around to where we're making $3,000 a month on it. Ah, so there is a silver lining to this story. We were doing $12,000 a year and we're on track to do 36,000 this year, if not 40, because you know, holidays, we can bump it up. Very nice. Very nice. And it's so no longer I falling am, down the hill. I am six months into my first vacation rental and I have learned a lot of lessons that I can tell women, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. And yeah. how not to get robbed your first weekend in business. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tell everybody there's ten thousand dollars in goods in your house. That's yeah. funny. So uh, I'm curious get insurance when you too. get insurance. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm curious when you when you go from a month to month rental to an Airbnb, you know, kind of short term short term stays. Obviously, the income goes up, the gross goes up. Any any kind of headaches or other kind of stories or anything? Not really. We had this house free and clear and it took us 18 months to flip it. So we had all of that free and clear too. Yeah. And we got a lot of money from the drug dealers that were living there over the last three years. So we were almost, you know, to where we were full in our investment. Okay. So we put about $15,000 worth of furniture in it yep. and then we got robbed. So then we had to put another 10. So I'm 25,000 into furniture in this house. And that's really the only big expense there was because we had the house free and clear already. Gotcha. I would guess there's um, not every house could be an Airbnb, right? It has to have some, maybe a view or something. No, or can this house I mean, literally was falling down the side of a mountain. It is in a, not a bad neighborhood, but there's nothing to draw you to this area. There's no view. There's no pool. There's no sidewalk. Okay. There's nothing. We allow dogs. Uh huh. Okay. It's clean. It's quiet. I take that back. It's not quiet. It's like right next to the interstate, but there's no neighbors. I mean, it sits like on its own little island. There is okay. nothing. But last week in Knoxville, we had the Bassmaster Fishing Tournament. Yep. And we had like 18 families that wanted to stay in our house okay. because people spend their vacations going and watching men fish. Okay. So I guess it, it Really? So that's why you're looking at these two additional houses that are currently empty. You're like, Hey, if some is good, more is better. Absolutely. And I have a little bit of a problem with moderation. I don't believe in it. Yeah. So, I mean, we're going full throttle into this thing and you know, the more we do, the more we learn and the better we get. Okay. I like it. I, like I it. love it. I absolutely love it. I have a lady that works with me pretty well full time. She's on call full time. Yep. And I, I love to travel. That's why I got into real estate is because I wanted direct deposits to come into my checking account, whether I was in town or not. Yep. And those Airbnb drops are pretty when they come. In. <laughs> They're pretty. I like that. They're pretty. They are real pretty when they come in. And they, so I have this lady though, that is in Knoxville all the time. And so she goes and greets my guest for me and talks to him online. And if anything comes up, she handles it. So that is the best decision that I made on the Airbnb. And as I add more, then she'll have more people to go meet and greet. 
I like it. I like it. All right. And um, when did you get started investing in real estate? What, when, when was that? December 2012, I was at an auction and they were selling a bank mm -hmm. portfolio. Yep. And so we were just selling vacant land around East Tennessee and everything was going for like $500 or $1,000. And I was like, wait a second, I got a thousand bucks. I just raised my hand on the next one. I had no idea where it was. It was in Decatur. I thought Decatur was in Georgia. I mean, that's how close <laughs> I was when I got started. I just wanted to have my name on some land because yeah. a hundred years ago, women couldn't just buy land. And I thought, well, I can do that. Nice. I got a thousand bucks. And then Lord, it snowballed from there. Okay. Well, let's, let's talk about it snowballing. Cause again, this, this is going to be about empowering women. I think it really starts with your story. So you raise your hand, you get a plot of land. sounds like at least and one. I, I, I hightailed it down the highway to see that thing and <laughs> it's gorgeous. I did a really good job. I'm pretty proud, proud of myself. I'll pat myself on the back on that one because the bank that had foreclosed on it, this had been a, you know, up and coming development during 06, 07. Yeah. And the lady that had bought it before me lived in California and she paid $69,000 for this land that I bought for 1500. Wow. Okay. Tax tag and title all mine, 1500 bucks. And I mean, I, I was so clueless. I thought I didn't have my checkbook there. And I was like, crap, I'm going to have to pay for this. And they were like, no, we go to closing. You have to get title, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Woo. I mean, I'll just write a check today and it's mine. I thought, you know, I'd bought and sold cars and trucks and stuff. And yep. I just had never bought any real estate. So I learned. Then about um, through the next spring, I went to a lot of tax sales. Yep. And I just started buying random pieces of land for 500 bucks and a thousand bucks, just whatever I could find just to, figure out the process. I'm very much a, you know, like I want to see it and feel it and do it. Don't just tell me about it. Right. I want to go like get dirty and figure it out. Ah, I like it. So, so how, that how, summer yeah. we were hanging out at auctions again and I ended up buying my first house. And then like the next week I got my contract on a for sale by owner on the house falling down the mountain. And I was like, girl, you got to stop. Like we're out of cash. <laughs> my mom had always bought houses and just paid money. Like I don't know where she got the money from, from or whatever. She just made it happen. And so I figured when I ran out of cash, I would stop investing. Yeah. But you know that you don't have to have money to buy houses. And literally I went broke trying to get rich in real estate. Like I spent every penny I had and then I borrowed my brother's life savings. I mean, I was full tilt into this thing. And then I figured out I didn't need any money and I felt like a fool because I could have been buying lots of houses for the last 10 years with no money, especially during the recession. But yeah. you know, hindsight's 2020. Yeah. So once I figured out that I didn't need any money, and I could do lease options or options or owner financing. I went from two houses in 13 to 14 houses in 14. Wow. In 15, we started on the apartments. I did another 15 deals. And I mean, we just, it just went up like a hockey stick after I figured out the secret. Yeah, that's nice. And this is, this is what you do full time, right? I am full time in real estate investing one way or the other. I've got 10 companies. Oh my so, goodness. Yes. And you know, part of that though is just insurance and protection and you know, yeah. you got to have so many assets in one. And so it's not, it's not like that, but I am really running like five companies. Okay. All right. Well now let's transition into empowering women. And um, you know, where do you want to kind of start with that? Is, is it just belief? Is it kind of understanding? You want to point out that real estate, it, it's not a, it's not a business that's oriented towards male or women, right? It's, it's, it is what it is. I believe that every woman deserves passive income. I mean, we're just amazing walking around earth. People should just pay us. Ah, okay. Just for being here and just doing our awesome. thing and making life happy, you know? Yeah, yeah. So in order to do that, we need something attached to the earth. <laughs> Right. And that's where the real estate comes in. I, I'm in Tennessee. Everybody I know wants to be, or every woman I know wants to be a Proverbs 31 woman. And so do I. Okay. And to be a Proverbs 31 woman, verse 16 says, she goes to inspect a field and she buys it. With her earnings, she plants a vineyard. So to me, if you want to be a Proverbs 31 woman, you have to be a real estate investor. And then with your earnings, you plant generational wealth. Every woman I know wants to make enough money that she can 
buy all the bags she wants. She can go on all the trips she wants. She can eat the fancy food that she wants. She can spool herself. She won't have to depend on a man to make sure she's got a roof over her head. She doesn't have to depend on a man if she wants a new necklace. She doesn't have to depend on, you know, her husband or dad or brother or whatever. Worst comes to worst, she'll hire somebody to come fix whatever is wrong. All right. And that, that is what women want. And a lot of women wake up one day either pissed off at their husband or pissed off at their baby daddy or whatever and realize that, you know, this is all falling on me. If I'm going to provide for these kids, if these kids are going to have a better life, hell, if I'm going to have a better life, if my dog's going to have a better life, I got to do this and I got to do it now. I've already wasted 30, 40, 50 years doing it everybody else's way, it's time to get started. And I think when women really wake up and put their big girl panties on, they realize that it's up to them. That's a very and empowering statement. I really think though it helps to get good and pissed off. If you're, if you're not mad, if you don't have that fire under your skirt, it's, 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 it's a big mountain to climb. But you get going on it, and you get surrounded by other women that are ready to rock and roll. Yeah. It's a lot easier. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. Cause again, like like-minded and getting around that kind of circle of influence. I know you and April together, which I can only imagine you two in a room together. Oh my God. <laughs> Woo! There's some fire coming out of that. Oh my God. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes, definitely. So I don't really know anybody in Knoxville except my mom that likes real estate as much as I do. Okay. I know some real estate agents. Yeah. I'm a broker, but they're chasing that clear to close and they're hustling to make somebody else rich and women are givers. And so they want to make sure that everybody around them is happy and that they've provided for everybody else and they put themselves last. And I'm like, you know what? Stop it. If you're not going to put yourself first, who else is y'all are passing up thousands of dollars of monthly income to go after one $3,000 closing that you're going to have to split with your broker. It just doesn't make any sense when you actually like look at it for maybe 10,000 feet. But what people get in the rut of is looking at, well, I got that discover payment. I got that mortgage payment. I got that car payment. Kids got to go to daycare, private school, this, that, and the other. I got all these bills. And so they never figure out, okay, if I got $10,000 worth of bills every month that I got to pay, how can I make $10,000 a month passively? I can go out and hustle houses, but what if I did two or three listings and then I kept one? Exactly. Or if I don't have a license, what if I went out and wholesaled or assigned or just got in the middle of an apartment deal? What if I went out and scouted uh, red lots? out in the country and I could sell that option to a gas station oh. and make money for the rest of my life and then pass that on to my kids. They look at the immediate pain and not the, how can I get myself out of this in the next two years? There you go. I like that because passive income is not something that just goes zero to a hundred in, in a day. It does take a plan two years, you know, whatever that is. It's, it's, it snowballs. It starts small, my experience. But once it gets to that kind of tipping point, boy, it just whoo, takes off. And when we talk about lease options, you know, I don't know how regular landlords make any money with regular renters. Because, you know, if you buy a house, you put 20% down on a house and you got a thousand dollar a month payment, you can rent it for $1,200. You're like, whoo, making 200 bucks a month. And I'm like, yeah, but you put 20% down. It's going to take you like 10 years to get that back. Now you got another 10 years on top before you start making any money. It's going to be like 40 years before you actually get $1,200 a month. Yeah. In lease options, I can put nothing down on these houses, get somebody to pay me ten, fifteen, forty thousand dollars $40,000 to move in. So I immediately have money. My payment might be a thousand dollars. And then when I get 1200, I'm immediately making $200 fluff on top. You do one of those deals a year, that's 10,000 for somebody to move in and 200 a month. So that's 10,000 every month. That's 120,000 that you made. 200 a month times 10. By the end of the year, you're making two grand a month. You do that for two years, you probably got five grand coming in every single month and you made 
250 or $300,000. No real estate agent in the world is doing that. I agree. So, um, let's go, let's go, let's pretend I'm, uh, one of those pissed off women. I've, you know, sick of baby daddy's drama or, or whatever, right? Men suck, whatever it is. Um, or, you know, whatever. Uh, where, where should some, where would, you know, where would a woman look you up or, or look you or April up? I know, I think you have an event coming up that's pretty exciting I hear about. So. Yes. You know. Well, I mean, you don't have to hate men. I don't bash men. I love men. My dad's here helping me move some furniture right now. My brother is my partner in my houses. My husband's my partner in my apartments. But every once in a while, they just kind of get under my nerves. And I'm like, you know, there's no way I can do this. <laughs> I like it. You know? And I don't know anybody that has any relationship with anybody that somebody don't get on their nerves every once in a while. Very true. Very true. I love men. Okay. I just, you know, I can do it backwards and in high heels. There you go. <laughs> backwards. So April has an awesome YouTube channel and I have a pretty exciting YouTube channel also full of free content. April and I partnered together to create private money profits. And we have an event coming up in May. We're going to Kentucky to hang out at the Derby to hang out with rich people because ah. that's where you borrow rich people's money is when you hang out with them. Yep. And, you know, at Private Money Profits, we're talking about women that have equity in their home that they could be loaning out to other women who want to fix and flip or other women that want to buy and hold apartments and then they, you know, fluff it up and refi it or women that have an IRA or a 401k. A lot of women and their husbands build up businesses and then sell them and they're with this big chunk of money and you know, some guy in a suit says, oh, put it in the stock market. And you're like, well, that's kind of boring. Isn't there something else I can do with it? Oh yeah, girl, there's a lot of other things you can do with it. That's a lot more fun than just stashing it away and logging in to check it. It's super boring, but um, that's what we focus in on private money profits. Very, very cool. And I'm sorry. So it's at the Derby. Did you say the date? When, what day it is? It's May uh, 1st through the 3rd. And then the Derby is the 4th. So go and May 1st to the 3rd, learn a bunch of stuff, two powerful women, rock stars, and then go party at the Derby. That's right. That's right. That's right. And all of the details are on privatemoneyprofits.pro. Ah, dot pro. Okay. Yeah, dot pro. Um, I've also, I've got a bundle package too. So if you want to get into houses, apartments, private money profits, and vacation rentals, I've got a bundle where you can get into all of those and come to all four events all year. It's, it's super awesome. But definitely, uh, if you go to WhitneyNicely.com slash TV, that'll route you straight over to my YouTube channel. Very, very cool. All right. And uh, you want to talk any more about the Proverbs 31 woman? Kind of what the... I would just say that if, you know, you want to be a Proverbs 31 woman and wear the purple or wear the pink and, you know, be honored at the city gates and do all the things that a Proverbs 31 woman does, it really helps if you've got that passive income set up so you can start funding all of your other passion projects. We've all got things that we want to do and people that we want to help. And it's a lot easier to set up a nonprofit if you're making a big profit. <laughs> Excellent point. So I always close out my interviews by talking about the future a little bit. You have so much going on now and I can, I can sort of see this year unfolding for you, but let's try something different. Look out three to five years. What is, what is Whitney doing then? I'm still talking about real estate. I'm still helping women in real estate. I'm going to be growing into more helping women build businesses mm -hmm. in male dominated fields. I've also got a dump truck company. Ah. I've got a general contractor's license. I like to see whatever the guys are doing, I'm going to go do it too. Real estate investing, trucking, contracting, whatever it is, because, you know, I don't know if you've heard this, but men usually make more money than women. I've heard that. I have. So I'm out to prove that wrong. I, I look forward to that as a, as a father of a daughter and having sisters and mothers and wives, uh, you go get it. I, I, Thank I, you. I wish you nothing but the best. Um, Thank you. What else? Have we missed anything? I mean, you've got so much stuff going on. Anything you, you feel like we've missed? I should have asked you a question. I, I could probably talk to you for hours. <laughs> I'm cool if you are. I would say one other thing is real estate is not easy. And anybody that tells you it's easy and that there's a one fix for all and that all you got to do is pay them $50,000 and you'll be a millionaire. Yeah. It's, it's not true. It's hard. And I can't count the times I've cried in the kitchen floor and just wanted to sometimes quit. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I just want to tell the ladies, no matter where you are, if you're beginning or if you're up leveling, keep going. Yeah, I'm been- cheering for you. And I know you can get all those dreams accomplished, but you can't do it if you quit. So keep going. Cry yeah. if you have to. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Cry, get it out of the way. Just get up and move on because it's I just believe- like farting. You got to let it out or you'll explode. Exactly. Yeah. I think, <laughs> I think real estate investing tests us on purpose the first five to 10 years because the oh, rewards Lord, yeah. are so awesome, right? Once you get there and you stay committed uh, yep. and you get over whatever that hump is for you, I mean, it's like you've, you've entered Nirvana. Um, yep. But yeah, I think it purposely tests you, right? It has FBI raids and, you know, falling down a mountain and somebody steals your furniture. It's all a test to see if you're willing to be, stay committed so you've earned the right to, you know, have the rewards. Absolutely. And, you know, they say the struggle is real. It's not the struggle that's real, y'all. It's the up level that's real. Because if you aren't trying to get yourself better, nothing bad happens. It's when you decide, you know what? I deserve more than this. Oh, watch. Here comes a storm of epic proportions. Yeah. Every single time. Awesome. Awesome. Well, this has been a lot of fun. I am really glad that April connected us. Uh, I can't wait to hear more about the event going on. I'm going to see if I can't get some of my lady friends out there. Maybe even my wife. It's going to be fun. Um, I mean, we're okay for dudes. You can come on if you want to. I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm not sure men are welcome. You know, I'm, I'm kind of curious. <laughs> There's a lot of pink in my life. <laughs> There's a lot of girl power in my life. But, you know, I've got a program for Sealed and Fast, and there's 200 and... 12 people in there I think today and there's probably 12 dudes all right and those dudes are getting their deals done and a lot of times the guys that join and come hang out with us love it because there's not as much of a contest to yeah. prove who's stronger and better and bigger and whatever we're just like straight pouring out information for three days yeah no I I um I can absolutely see that, right? The, the male ego, testosterone, whatever nonsense that comes with, not always helpful. And right? we break it down and use, I think April and I do a really good job of both using small words that anybody can understand. Small words. <laughs> I'm a You're very awesome. simple minded person. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. If, if I, um, if I'm in a room with somebody who's trying to talk vocabulary and nonsense and acronyms, oh God, I'm like, see ya. I'm out. You're trying to sneak something by me. See you later. I don't, I don't have time for that. Just no. give it to me like I'm a third grader. Totally agree. Totally agree. Well, this has been uh, so much fun, Whitney. I wish you nothing but success. I, I look forward to following your YouTube channel and see what you got going on. Um, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you so much. You got it.